Hello on this online training. Um, today we're going to talk about um, how to search for federal awards and um, conducting some market research and they kind of go hand in hand, but um, that's what we're going to go over today. Um, I'm Rosalind Dix and also on online with us is Deanna Langman and Philip Lukey. Philip's out of um, our Bozeman office. He's um, we have a PTAC there, so he's, he's the advisor in that area. And then Deanna's in our billings office, and she's our program manager for um, the state program. So just a couple housekeeping items. Um, just please stay muted during the presentation. We'll take questions at the end. Um, we do need to have people, we need to know who's all here. And I mean, we, we can see your names, but we need you to kind of like sign in. So. In the chat box, can you please type your first and last name and um, your company name in the chat box and then we'll have record of it. Um, during the Q&A, you can use, um, there's a raise your hand feature. If you hover over the bottom of your screen and click on participants, then you'll have the option to click on raise your hand. Um, you, If you aren't able to use your mic for whatever reason, you can um, you can type a question in the chat box as well. And after the presentation, you'll receive a survey. If you can um, fill that out, that'd be great. We do appreciate your feedback. Helps us um, tailor our, our trainings and presentations, so make them better for you. Um, it's only like five questions, so it won't take you very long, I promise. So a couple things about our program. Uh, many of you are, are already clients of the PTAC, whether it's in Billings or Missoula or Kalispell. I know there's a lot of people from outside of our area. Um, but there, I think there's a lot of new people as well. So um, just to let you know, PTAC stands for Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And uh, we do have seven locations around the state. So, um, you know, we were here to provide free government contracting assistance um, to businesses. Um, we're funded by the Department of Defense. Um, we help with, these are just some examples of what we help with registrations, like SAM registrations, State of Montana, invoicing systems, we can help you review solicitations, we can help you do market research, which is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we do trainings and, and there's more. So please utilize us as a resource. If you need to find the PTAC in your area, please um, go to montanaptac.org and click on locations and you'll be able to see who the advisor is um, in your area. So just a couple things that uh, we're going to go over today. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of doing market research and using, um, using the website that we're gonna be using. Uh, we'll talk about where you do find that information, some examples of the type of data that you can extract. Uh, we will navigate to the website um, and conduct a basic search. And um, I am gonna show you how to create what's called a pivot table and I'll explain more about that. Um, when we when we get into it. I'm not going to go into great detail about how to do it. Um, that's um, a tool that, you know, we can do for you, I guess, I would say, um, to, um, you know, to help go in more depth into the market research. So, okay, so um, where do you find federal awards? So there's a couple of websites. The one that we're going to talk about today is usaspending.gov. And it's, it's because it's way more user friendly than the system that, um, is, that, the, that the information is actually uploaded to. The site that the award information is actually uploaded to is called FPDS, um, which stands for Federal Procurement Data System. That's the um, the site that the agencies actually upload the award data into and then USA spending has some code written in the background that talks to FPDS and pulls the information over so you're getting the same information. And um, another reason that we I'm not going to show you FPDS is that uh, it is actually going away and it's being combined into that beta.sam.gov website that we talked about on our last webinar so. Um, that won't even be there. It's going to be in a different spot um, fairly soon. Um, just so you know that the information that's on USA spending um, is public. You don't need to log in to sign to, to get into it or anything. So um, it's public information. It's there for you to, to, um, to look at. And the note there on the bottom is um, mostly for people who are brand new to government contracting and maybe even or you're just starting to kind of look at all of this. We're going to be searching for um, 
awards using our NAICS codes and, and PSC codes. Um, so if you don't know that information, that would be a first step before you start doing some of this research um, is to, to get that. And we can help you with that. Um, you know, we can also help with your STAM registration, which is where those codes would be, would be going into. So some of the benefits and importance, um, you know, what you can get from the website is actually a lot of information, but, you know, when you do your first basic search, what you, what you're first going to see is that you can get an idea of the agencies that buy your products and services, you know, per your NAICS codes or your product service codes. And, um, you know, that's really beneficial because then you can really focus, which I have a bullet point on that, helps you focus your efforts, focus on what agencies you should be selling to. Um, you know, you can, you know, not every agency is going to be buying your products and services. So you don't want to try to look for opportunities with every agency. It's going to be wasted effort. So this just really helps you kind of narrow down who you should be looking at. You can see information on how much they buy and in, in the form of a dollar amount, how often, because we can, you can do a date range, you can do, um, we're going to look um, by fiscal year. Um, so you can definitely get an idea if it's something they buy every single, every single year, every, every day, or just, you know, once in a while. Um, and this, I just want to note that this access to this data is really unique to the government marketplace. You know, you don't have this, this capability in the commercial world. So, you know, use it to your advantage if you can. I mean, you can find out who's winning these awards. Um, and there's just, I, I just, there's really a lot of data on this website that, um, you know, you can use to your advantage. And some, and some businesses will use, use a lot of the data. Some will only use a little bit of it. It just, it really depends on your business and what your goals are with government contracting on how much data you really would even need to use off of this website. And, you know, just the more informed you are, the better you can position yourself within the marketplace. It helps you make decisions like, should you you know, which agency should you approach or should you look at what maybe you're better suited as a subcontractor to some of the primes that you find in there. It just, it really helps you um, make some of those decisions. So you're not, you know, kind of all over the place in, in the government in, in your government um, journey. So, um, so, oh, I have a blank slide in there. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> So what kind of the information can you extract? So I know I talked about it. You can find the agency and the sub agencies. You can see the names of the awardees and their information, um, like their DUNS number, where they're located. Um, and from there you can, I mean, you can find phone numbers and contact information, but um, you know, we don't have to go too much in the weeds there. How much are the awards, um, the type of awards, the contract types, um, whether it was set aside or not. I mean, the list really does go on. And, you know, you're not gonna be able to see some of this information at first glance when we do the basic search. But when I show you the pivot table, you'll be able to see uh, more of that information. And so just a tip, let PTAC help you extract some of this data, um, especially with the pivot table, because we can really help customize it to your business. You know, if you have specific information that you're looking for and, you know, we can help you figure out how to find that information using USA Spending and help do that market research for you. So, yes, I'm going to show you how to do a basic search. I'm going to show you what the pivot table looks like. But, you know, I really want you to, you know, if, if you need to really get into some in-depth information, then I really encourage you to reach out to us so that we can um, help guide, guide you and help explain what some of that information even means. Because a lot of, you know, most of you probably won't even really know, you know, what the information is that you're looking at um, in the data. So um, we can help help you with that. So um, before we get into the website, just a couple tips and items of note. We are going to, I'm going to search by a NAICS code today. I'm not going to do a PSC code, but um, just know that, you know, NAICS codes are really broad. So, you know, it's really hard to determine exactly what the contract was for. You know, they do have a description field that sometimes has pretty good information in it, sometimes not. Um, you know, we're we're dealing with the, integ the integrity of the data is based upon the person entering it. So, you know, if they only put 
a little word in the description field, well, we can't really, you know, we're not going to know exactly what it's for. And with the NAICS codes, there's, um, you know, there's so much under one NAICS codes a lot of times that, you know, it could, it could be, you know, specifically for that peer code, like specifically for an electrician, or maybe it's actually for um, putting in an alarm system, which actually falls under the same code. So just keep that in mind. You know, the point of finding, of using the information to find the agencies that buy your services and products isn't to necessarily exactly find out what it was for. That's, you know, would require, would require more research and you know, reaching out to the agency, but it's just to get an idea of who's buying under your code so that you can help focus your efforts. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you do search by PSC codes, that tends to be a little more specific. They, those are a little more descriptive and um, you will actually get different results when you um, do your search by a PSC code in, in USA Spending. So I encourage you to do both. Um, just to see what comes up and what agencies, what the difference in agencies is. Um, you know, I, I would I definitely, you know, decide what information you're seeking before you start searching. You know, if you're really just doing a basic search, like I just want to see what's under this code in Montana, okay, that's one thing. But if you really want to get in depth and, and, and more detailed, really decide what is the goal of my search and you know whether you're able to do that yourself on the site or you need our help you know that information is really important so that we know exactly what it is that we're looking for okay um you know you can use this site to get as little or as much data as you want i think i kind of mentioned that already simple award search simply just you know kind of get an idea of the agencies and that may be all you really need i mean some some businesses are all they really need to know is what agencies they they should be looking for opportunities for maybe they're a janitorial firm and they just want to kind of see what agencies buy janitorial services in montana so then they know okay well i should be looking for opportunities you know with these agencies you know it could be really simple um, or it could be really complex like maybe you're um, an architect and engineering firm and you you know, want to bid on a multi-year contract that a certain agency has, you know, comes open for recompete every five years. Well, that requires much more in-depth research using the pivot table um, to kind of find out, you know, well, when does that come open for recompete? That is information that we can, you know, we can start to gather from this information and then helps you say, okay, well, I can start preparing for that. Maybe I can reach out to the agency and and get a copy of the old solicitation and start preparing. I mean, those that should start to be kind of your thinking, especially if you're looking to pr to pursue more complex um, opportunities. Okay. Um, there is a delay of when the awards show up. Um, Philip or Deanna, can you remind me, would it, do you know the delay for USA spending? There's difference between civilian and, and military, right? On the delay of when the, you'll see the awards. Yeah, right? I don't recall, I don't recall I, the delay from one to the other. Go ahead, Philip. Uh, I don't know about USA spending if there's an additional delay, but with FPDS, the Department of Defense um, contract actions don't show up for 90 days. Yeah, 90 days. So. So keep that in mind, especially if Department of Defense will be 90 days with civilian agencies. I mean, again, you're kind of, I mean, this is just my opinion and kind of how I picture the office setting is that, you know, I might be sitting on someone's desk for a couple of days before it actually gets entered. And then USA Spending has to pull the data over. So just keep in mind, it may not be right away, okay? Um, biggest takeaway, I think this, you know, is that, you know, just is that this data can help you make decisions on where your business fits within the federal government marketplace. That's, that's, I think, really what, you know, I want you guys to focus on the most. And then after that, we can, you know, maybe talk about some more details and help you develop a strategy um, based on what your goals are. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get on the website here. Weird, okay. Oh, 
Oops, sorry, this, my screen is, oh, there we go. Give me one second. Okay, that's all. There we go. Okay, can you guys see that okay? I don't know why that was so weird. It's like it wasn't there. <laughs> we can only see the Zoom sign-in screen. Is that what you're trying to get us to see? No, my USA spending screen? No, well, I'm not seeing it. Oh, weird, okay. Oh. I think you have to now stop you... share. Wait, now can there you see it? There it is, yep, okay. there it is. That was weird, yeah, because it's, okay. anyways. Okay, so this is the home screen for USA Spending. USAspending.gov. I mean, there's different information on here. I'm not gonna get into it. Um, I mean, if you really want to look at total amount that the dollar, the dollar amount that agencies are spending and see cool graphs and stuff like that, you can kind of play around on here, but uh, we're gonna focus on under award search. Um, and then we're gonna go to advanced. And just like the beta.sam, you know, when we were looking at contract opportunities, if you were on that webinar, there's a set of filter criteria here on the left. You can search by keyword, um, just the, there are the data or the pieces of information that it picks up are, are what's listed here. It, you know, it'll, if you type in a keyword, it's, it's going to look in these spots. So, you know, if it picks that up in the award description, I think that's really good, especially if you're kind of looking for something that's pretty, um, maybe a little more niche and you want to see if, you know, get a little more detail that way. Um, that's great, but know that those keywords aren't going to only show up in the description. There's other places it shows up, which may or may not apply to the opportunity that you're, or to the awards and to the information that you're trying to seek. Okay. I'm not going to do keyword today, but that is an option for you. Um, so then you want to first choose your time period, um, you know, date range, I think would probably, I don't usually search like that, but if, you know, maybe, you know, when something has been, you know, the opportunity is closed and you want to see if it's awarded, maybe you can put in a date range to narrow it down a little bit more rather than looking for the entire fiscal year. That could be one way to narrow it down. But for today, I'm going to choose, um, fiscal year. So I'm just going to choose just 2019. You know, when I do a pivot table, I, it depends on the information I'm looking at, looking for. I may choose three fiscal years because then you can kind of get like a bigger picture of, of what's, you know, what went on, you know, with the agencies and the dollar amounts and, and everything. Um, but, you know, you, you can just look one year at a time. I will say for the data download, if you, you know, like Department of Defense, it's honestly, you can't really do more than one year. There's too much data. It won't, it won't download a file for you. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, we'll just click on one year. I'm not going to click on 2020 because we're still in 2020. It's not a completed year. Um, you know, but if you were looking for a recent award in this fiscal year, then obviously you would want to, that would be an option for you. So we'll just click 2019. Um, there's plenty of other type, you, you know, things you can look for. Um, you know, we're not going to focus on this, uh, you know, and actually if you, you can, you can pull this information out of the, out of the pivot table, uh, which I will show you. Um, so you don't necessarily have to do your filter criteria with some of these other, these other options here. I'm going to scroll down to NAICS code. And I'm going to use my favorite code, which is the janitorial code. And I'll click on it. Always make sure that it shows up here down on the bottom. Um, otherwise, you'll, you, won't get, you won't get the right results. So make sure that it shows up down here. Here's where you would add a product and service code if you have those picked out of, on your SAM or if, you, if you're familiar with what yours are. Uh, we won't do that today. And um, I am going to come up and I am going to go to location because I'm going to look, I want to see what, what was awarded in Montana in 2019 
um, under that janitorial code. So first I'm going to select country and then I'm going to select my state and Montana or place of performance, the difference between place of performance and recipient is that place of performance is where the work was done. And then recipient is where the awarded person is located at. So kind of have to decide well, what is it I'm looking for. I mean, mostly place of performance, I think is the most relevant because, you know, if you want to do work in Montana, you're going to want to look, look, look in Montana. And then also you're going to you have to click add filter. And again, make sure that Montana shows up here on the bottom. So let's just double check my filter. I've got 2019. I've got Montana. And I've got my janitorial code. So then I'm going to hit submit. And sometimes this website takes a while. Hopefully today it doesn't. I only did one year. <laughs> we'll see. There we go. That's not bad. Move your guys over here. So, so this is just a really basic search. So now what you're looking at is the award ID number here. Um, let me just, I'm just going to click in one so you can look at it. If you want more details, a little more detail about what the award is, just the specific one, you can um, click on it here. They're all hyperlinked. So you can see who the recipient is, where they're located. Um, you know, you can see an idea of when the contract is started and ends. Here's that description field I was talking about. So this one actually is for custodial, but janitorial, the janitorial code is a pretty peer code. I mean, they're not gonna use it for many other things. Not much falls under it. And here's that product service code that I was talking about. So, um, you know, this one's also pretty specific. So again, you can, if you search by those codes, you'll, you will get different, you'll get different results. And I'm going to move you guys over. Um, how much was obligated? You can, you can see um, just a lot of different detail information, but that's just one award. And then um, more description. Um, this one looks like, I mean, I'd have to look into it in more detail, but it looks like maybe it's a multi-year award. So let me go back. Oops. All right. So then, okay, here's all the recipient names of, of the awards. You can see, so these would be like prime contractors. So, you know, if you, if you, felt that you were more suited to be a subcontractor, you, you could contact these people. You could, um, if you click on them, you can get their DUNS number and then you can look it up, look up a phone number and their SAM registration, uh, which I, you know, which I would do. I mean, you could Google them, but the benefit of looking up their DUNS number and SAM is that you can get their government point of contact um, information, their phone number. So then you know, like, that's a good person to contact, at least start with. Um, award amounts, you know, just keep in mind some, you know, these award amounts might not necessarily be the total amount of the contract. It depends on what type of contract it is or, or agreement. Maybe if it's, you know, if it's a multi-year agreement, then maybe that's just one, one task order or delivery order. So it doesn't mean that this is the full amount of the, of the contract. And let me go my scroll bar. So if you scroll over, Here's where you can see the, the head agency here and then the sub agency here. Sub agencies probably is a little more useful to you because that's really who you're going to be doing the business with. You know, it's not the whole Department of Agriculture, they've got multiple sub agencies that fall under that department. So really, okay, well, I know that the Forest Service purchased janitorial service, services. So, you know, I would want to, you know, that would help me make decisions. Okay, I need to look for opportunities in Beta SAM. Um, that for the Forest Service or, you know, GSA, their public building service or a Bureau of Reclamation, you know, it starts when you start looking at this information, you know, you it should start kind of stimulating more questions. Okay, well, 
what was it for? Where was it? Um, could I should I travel to that that place and conduct those services? You know, is this a multi year contract um, that I should pay attention to? When does it come open for a recompete? So then I can bid on it when I can start preparing and and bid on it when it does. You know, those, you know, start kind of start thinking about those types of questions as as you do this type of research. That's that's what I would like you to see you do. Um, and then the award type. Um, so these these ones with delivery orders, you know, that's probably some type of multi-year agreement, maybe an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, or IDIQ contract. Um, you know, they've they've issued orders against an agreement. So the government isn't sure how much of a service or product they need or when exactly they need it, but they know they'll need it within you know, this five year time period. So then when they need it, then they issue an order. That's an example of, of a type of agreement. Um, and those ones are, you know, really are good, but they also don't necessarily guarantee work all the time. It depends. Um, so if you want, I'm not going to download it, but to actually put all of this data into one spreadsheet, you can download it. It puts it into a CSV file. So let me try to stop share and reshare again and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Okay. So this is a data download and I did it for janitorial in Montana for 2017, 18 and 19. And yeah, 17, 18, 19 for the janitorial code in Montana. So as you can see, this is like a crazy spreadsheet and you're like, what am I even looking at? <laughs> So this is where a pivot table comes in handy because it helps you sort this data and you can kind of sort it however you need to. But again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stress this. Let us help you with this. I have videos out there that teach you how to do this. I'm happy to give you the links and you're happy to watch them. Um, you know, and if you are familiar with pivot tables, you know, I can even troubleshoot some stuff with you if you want to try it on your own. Totally, you can do any of that. This is a it's a free country, you could do whatever you want. <laughs> but um, I encourage you to get our help because we can help interpret the data for you. We can maybe help you focus in on a piece of data if this is really what you what you wanna, um, if you think a pivot table is, is what you need to get the answers that you're looking for. So I'm going to insert and then pivot table and it selects all the data automatically and hit okay. And so let me go back to my data set. So what it does is it takes all of these are all the data points that you'll see contract transaction award ID, etc, etc, etc. et, cetera, et, cetera, et cetera. Okay, so let me go back to the pivot table. It takes all those column headings and it puts them over here. And so these are the these are the data points that you use to pull in and out of your pivot table to sort the data. First, I'm going to put them in alphabetical order. Again, don't Feel like you need to take a bunch of notes right now okay i'm just um just showing you okay um that way i know i i can just quick more quickly go to the data points that i want to look at so i'm just going to do simple i want to pull in i want to know how much money the the agencies spent what agencies spent money in those years and how much it was okay and this is all in montana so keep that in mind so first I'm gonna to go to, oops, I'm gonna pull in federal action obligation. That's gonna go into the values field because it's a number. And then I'm gonna look for the awarding agencies, awarding agency name, and awarding, I wanna see the sub agency too. I'm gonna turn this into dollar signs because I like to see the money helps me everyone likes to see the money and then I'm going to put it in order of um, 
highest to lowest so that we know who's spending the most. So I'll click on that top one and it moves everything up. I think these are, everything should already be in order. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see that the Department of the Air Force over those last three years, this is a total amount over those three years, spent the most on janitorial in Montana. So I can think to myself, well, okay, maybe I would like to have a janitorial contract with the Air Force because they spend a, a, a fair bit of money on it. I want to look for those opportunities. Maybe it means you reach out to the agency to have a conversation or, you know, talk about, you know, what your business does and how you can solve a problem for them. Um, those are the kinds of next step, logical steps you may take from some of this information, okay? And then from there, you know, you can see Army, Navy, all of this. You know, you may, be, you may not really care too much about, you know, NOAA, for example, because over the last three years, they didn't buy that much janitorial services. I don't, I don't know where this was. I'd have to do some research, but I'm sure there's an office somewhere here in, in Montana where um, they needed some janitorial. Um, but, you know, you'd probably want to pay more attention to these higher dollar amounts because um, you can you can tell, okay, well, they obviously spend more money on janitorial. Um, I mean, that's really basic pivot table. I'm, like I said, I mean, all these different data points, I mean, I don't know what all of them are probably not necessary. I, as a matter of fact, I don't think they are, but, you know, if you really wanted to find out a specific, you know, contract and when it will come open for recompete and, you know, who it was. And then, and then from there, we can try to research some agency contact information. I mean, those are, those are kind of the, that's kind of like the breadcrumb trail where it, where it goes, but how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go and do you need to go? And that's what, you know, we can also help you make those, make those decisions. Like, I mean, do you even need to have super detailed information? Maybe not. Maybe it's just simply this. And now you have an idea. Okay, this is what I'm going to look for. Um, you know, that's actually really all I have. Um, I think we could probably start with questions and Deanna, Philip, if you have any other information you want to add that maybe I missed, um, please, please chime in. Roz, can you show the obligations by year? Can you separate it that way? Or you'd have to do separate tabs, huh? Um, can you pull I that I think in? so. Hold on. Let me, um, mm -mm. You can do separate tabs, but there is a way to filter it in here. I just have to, mm -hmm. yeah. So like, let's say you only wanted to look at 17. Okay. Let me go back. Mm -hmm. So it's action date fiscal year. If you click on this down arrow, you can see what filter criteria is in the pivot table. So if you unselect them all and you only want to see 2017, then you just mm -hmm. click it and hit okay. And oh, and then I have to drag this down into filters because you've see it has this little filter icon next to it. You have to drag it to filters. So now you can see that it moved. So now you have 2017 up here, and this is so this is all that was in 2017. Is that what you were asking, Deanna? I think so. More of a trend line, maybe 17, 18, 19 in a row. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, I'd probably have to. I'd have to maybe create separate tabs. Yeah. Yeah. But you could do it, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then as far as um, figuring out how to contact, uh, you know, the Air Force, the Army, I mean, there are ways to see which office um, mm -hmm. put, this, put this award out, right? Yep, there is, yep. Um, awarding, this gets a little... Mm -hmm. dicey. <laughs> um, so if you go to the awarding office code, so every mm -hmm. procuring office has a specific code um, assigned to them. And of course, there's a separate spreadsheet that has the codes and the office that is associated with them. You know, and also before FBO went away, 
FBO actually used to let you search opportunities by office code, and now the new way of searching it doesn't let you do that, which is a little frustrating. Especially, and, and, some, and some contractors have noticed that and also are like, well, now I can't search by, I, I do business with this specific office, oh, I can't do that. So kind of had to find a different way for them to search. But um, yeah, so if I pull in awarding office code, it starts, it starts layering it and that's what the pivot table does. You, you layer the information over here to the way you want it to show up over here. Um, so now we, again, we've got Department of Defense and then underneath the Air Force, this is the code for the office that, that, um, uh, that um, awarded it. So then I'd have to pull the other spreadsheet. I don't have it with me. You can go to that other spreadsheet and find the name of the office and then you can, it doesn't have contact information, but you can, I mean, you can do a Google search and, and find some kind of a phone number. I mean, that's one way to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, we can, there's, you know, you can really data mine. I mean, you can data mine contact information too. That's, that gets a little in the weeds, but you know, we can help you do that. I mean, we obviously have some contact information, but you know, there's so many offices all over the, all over the U S you know, we don't have, you, you might, you may have to do some Google searching and, you know, start, start with a phone number and kind of work your way in to find out who it is you need to talk to. But, um, we have lots of tips and tricks and ways we can find, help you find information. And this is one of our tips and tricks. So. Uh, Roz, I'm, oh, go ahead. go ahead. You go ahead, Philip. Uh, I was chatting with people, so I don't know if you already addressed this or not, but okay, uh, one, okay. of the one of the questions is, hello, can you get a list with the codes and what offices are under those codes? Yeah, so right now we can, let me, can you still see my, are you still looking at my spreadsheet? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so let me stop here. So currently that information is on FPDS. Uh, let me reshare. Okay, so this is FPDS, the other website I was talking about. And I think it's under training. Oh no, it's under worksite. Under worksite, you can download a spreadsheet here, list of contracting offices. Oh, okay. Maybe they've taken it down. Mm. So, okay. So they're moving a lot of this information over to the new site and maybe this is something that's not really available anymore. That's interesting. But this is where you used to be able to get it. I'm sure it'll be available somewhere else. Let me try again. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate. It doesn't look like I can do it anymore, but that is where you find it. I'll have to, let me make note of that. Was, that is actually pretty useful information. Um, so I'll have to see if we can, if it's in a different spot now. Okay, so I'm sorry that it's not there right now. Uh, but yeah, I'll see if I can find, ask some questions and see if anybody knows where it's at now, if it's still available or if it's not until they move everything over to the new site, so. Um, Roz, can you go back to the original um, 19 list from USA Spending? Just, just on, on- This one? Your original, yeah, there you yep. go. Can can you move it? Well, two things. Maybe scroll down just a bit to place of performance and recipient. So Roz did a search of of obviously a 19 janitorial contracts you know that were performed in Montana. But what I think is interesting is to look at the companies that it was a, these contracts were awarded to because mm -hmm. certainly they're not just Montana companies. If you really click right. through this list, you, you know some will be of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, many others are from uh, out of state, and they're and they're they're subcontracting with Montana companies to do this work. So, in my mind, that's a, a big clue. Y you know, mm -hmm. we have um, plenty of companies that are capable of bidding on some of this work. You know, maybe not all of it, but that's off. We see this a lot. You, you know, where where companies that sort of have this game down, so to speak, 
you know, they win contracts in different states and then sub the workout. And so I think the more that we can understand about that per industry, it, you know, that presents opportunities for, for Montana companies and it could present opportunities for a Montana company to do the same in a different state also. Mm -hmm. And and then the other thing, the recipient location, uh, that's the flip side of the equation, like Ra Roz was saying, you know, that would be Montana companies that have performed work in their industry could be in Montana. And a lot of times it is, but it also could be Montana companies that perform work in, in other states also, because federal work doesn't have uh, obviously those state boundaries. So that's an interesting way to look at this in terms of decision making too. And Roz, mm -hmm. can you go yeah. up just just real quick? This will just take a sec, but to the to the um, home screen, I guess, of USA Spending toward the top. There you go. So a couple of things, if you're interested in kind of more high level kind of reporting, uh, you see where it says Spending Explorer and Profiles, both. Um, those are sort of canned reports, if you want to call it that. You can get a profile by state. Mm -hmm. kind of shows you, you know, in Montana, uh, roughly, you know, by all industries in any given fiscal year, how much federal agencies, uh, you know, purchased from, from Montana companies, so to speak. And, and so it's kind of interesting to break it down that way. Spending Explorer, you can, if you go over there, I mean, what Ross did was a real specific search, you know, by a certain NAICS code, but you can get a bigger picture of of the, the, the marketplace, so to speak, by you know, looking at the profiles and then the spending explorer over there on the left, if you go there, Roz. You have to yep. make sure this USA spending pulls in not just contract data, it mm -hmm. also pulls in grants and loans. And we don't care about grants and loans, we only care about contracts. So you need to make sure when you're doing some of these, these filters and runs that you're not including grants and loans. And um, so like object class, for example, if you click on that, Roz. Yep. Um, you know, you'd have to filter the, the fiscal years up in the top left there, but you can see, uh, it looks like this is looking at just at 20. 2020. Yeah. So. Uh, you can do it on the, on this, on this yeah, screen, there's a way to filter it that way too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. These are just kind of already, you know, done canned reports. Like I say, if you click on contractual services, Roz, the 11.7, scroll down a bit. Oh. Yeah. It, I think this is kind of nice because this, this is, um, I mean, this isn't just Montana. You know, this is the, the big picture here. But obviously, no surprise, you, you know, the percentage of, of purchases, I mean, DOD is going to have the, the largest percent of, they have the largest federal budget, so they're going to have more purchases. But I, 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 it's kind of interesting to break it down this way, too. So there's different things you can do on here relative to market research, in addition to what Roz just showed you. Yep. Yep. What else? Yeah, what questions? I'm, there's probably a lot. Is there a lot, Philip? <laughs> no, there's not actually. Oh, <laughs> did I overwhelm you guys? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I will point out, I know, I know uh, Roz likes to use USA Spending. I, I, I use the FPDS a lot, and I know I'm going to have to learn mm -hmm. how to navigate uh, that on beta.sam, and I have played around with that a little bit, but uh, um, I guess you just, it's a matter of personal preference, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you like, whatever you're used to. But uh, in case any of my clients are on and they're wondering what this USA spending thing is, oh. uh, that's, that's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I use FPDS for certain things, um, but mostly, mostly I use USA spending and I mostly drive my clients to it. It's, it's a little more user friendly, but maybe the new way it is in beta.sam will be more user friendly. I don't know. We'll see because I can't wait to learn it. <laughs> Anything? Any questions? You guys are probably just like, you're going to have a lot of questions when I'm done, I bet. <laughs> well, and I think it's just important to keep in mind, you know, the government marketplace is 
you know, it's, it's transparent. I mean, you can, you can use this data to make decisions and gather market intelligence that you can't really, it's much harder to do in the, you know, in the commercial marketplace. And so that's the, the reason and the purpose of, of us showing you this today and, and uh, uh, helps you, you know, keep in mind, you have to focus in here, you know, maybe it's just two agencies or three, it can be overwhelming, but there are ways to focus in and narrow it down. And that's, that's the idea here today. And that's what we can help you do at the PTAC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell my clients all the time that uh, mm -hmm. if they were in the commercial marketplace, they'd have to pay a market research firm oh, yeah. quite a bit of money to find the kind of information that's available in these systems for free. Yeah. And this is just federal, of course. Uh, you know, it's a little more difficult in the, the with state purchasing mm -hmm. and local purchasing, you know, cities, counties. It depends how that varies, I think, by state. That's a little harder to get at, but but you can imagine you know, the size of the government marketplace is just overwhelming and there's almost nothing they don't buy. So, you know, it's just figuring out where your company fits in that spectrum. Okay, Roz, uh, yeah. question here. Um, will there be a class offered to help people walk through the process of bidding? Um, um, I mean, I have done like a RFP workshop before. Um, mm -hmm. That's like a formal request for proposal probably could do that again. Um, you know, there's, you know, it, 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 it depends on the opportunity. There's, there's formal um, negotiated RFPs, which are more time consuming and more involved. And then there's more simple RFQs or requests for quotes. Um, those don't require as much assistance. Um, I mean, I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to, to take that into consideration and, and do, do a training on that with, with everybody, um, at least give you the basics on what to look for, um, you know, how you respond to an opportunity isn't always the same um, yeah. for each agency, but um, yeah, I mean, I could definitely do another class on that. Um, I can, we can also work with you one-on-one -on -one to, mm -hmm. to help you you know, you have to give us enough time to read through the solicitation so we're both on the same page. And then, um, you know, we usually will be able to, you know, point out things to you that maybe you didn't see and then, you know, have a meeting to talk about it. Uh, make sure you do this, make sure you do that. And then um, when you are have your quote or your uh, proposal together, we're even happy to review it before you submit it to make sure you've got everything there. So. I think between a class and even some one-on-one -on -one assistance, um, you'll be able to get the help that you need, so. Questions are pouring in now. So uh, okay. here's the next one. Can you describe the process after you find some patterns and who is getting contracts? Where do you go to get in line for specific types of contracts using the information you have gathered? Yeah, so um, let's, let me just give you an example. Mm -hmm. So let's say you are looking at that pivot table and, um, you know, maybe we're looking at it together and we deter, we find, you know, we, we drill down on those dollar amounts and we find one that's one contract or one award that's pretty large. And you're like, I want that one. I would, I would then take that specific award, you know, look at who it was, you know, who it was awarded to. And then I would look at, um, you know, do some research to find out how long it was and what type of a con what type of agreement or contract it is. And let's just say that based on our research, we find that it is um, an IDIQ, an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity um, agreement. Those are generally a base year plus four option years. So we're looking at five years here. So you know that, you know, let's say in our research, we find that it was awarded, you know, this year, then we know we've, we've got, you know, this year plus, you know, four more years before it's going to come open for recompete. So let's say it was a little closer. Let's say, oh, it's coming open for recompete this year. Then you're like, oh, okay. Well, then the next step would be to contact the, um, to contact the agency and discuss that specific opportunity and say, have a conversation with them. I'm, I've, I've done my research. I found that there is this 
multiple award um, agreement for janitorial and um, I can see that it's coming open for recompete soon. Do you have an idea of when that's going to be posted so I can look at it? Do you have the old solicitation that I can look at um, and I can review? Um, that, that information is public. They can provide it to you. Um, so maybe getting a hold of the old solicitation so you can start preparing and then finding out from the agency when is it exactly going to come open out on the street for, for recompete so that you can get ready to bid on it. Does that answer your question? Roz and I would just add too, uh, you know, this is of course what we're looking at today are historical purchases for the purpose mm -hmm. of making some plans and, you know, gathering data and whatnot. But, you know, Ross did a, a, a webinar a couple of weeks ago on current opportunities that are out on the street and, you know, how to find those and, and set up filters and searches and whatnot. And so mm -hmm. that's certainly, you know, having the fundamentals in order first of all, is extremely important in the federal marketplace, having a, mm -hmm. a SAM registration with complete codes, having a, a fully developed SBA profile. You know, there's a, a number of other sites you may need to be set up on, but it's really, um, you know, kind of, and there's ways to, to, to gather contacts, you know, from beta.sam.gov on current opportunities. And so, you know, there's something every company should have called a capability statement. It's a standard in the federal marketplace. It's a marketing tool, a communication tool. And so, you know, examining the fundamentals first and, you know, maybe doing a little research to, to focus in on two or three agencies and then working with us to, to really figure out who you should be talking to, you know, in that agency is, mm -hmm. is, is huge. And, Process. Oh, sorry. Ahead. I just say the process is different depending on That's what right. type of contract and agreement it is. Yep. If it's something that is very definitive and short, it's it's like, okay, it starts in May and it ends in July. That's something that's probably, you know, that's that may just be a one-time opportunity. It may not right. be something that they procure every every year or at the same time every year. So that may be a situation where you're like, okay, well, I know that the agency buys that. Now let me go to my, my beta.sam and set up a search to get notices of those opportunities sent to me directly so that you're on top of it. You know, when I'm talking about these multi-year contracts, that's different. That, that can, if, if, you're, if you're savvy and you are really interested in finding out if your um, industry, if the agencies do that sort of agreement for your products and services, you know, that's when you can really drill down and, um, you know, do a lot of work on the front end so that you're not scrambling, I guess, yeah. when you randomly see the, the formal RFP come open for bid. And then you're like, oh, I've got to hurry up and get this together. If you can, if you are really interested in it and you really, that's one of your goals, for your business in government contracting is to get a large multi-year contract, then doing some of this upfront research and preparation can help you for when it does come open for recompete. So it just depends on what your goal is and you know what what those opportunities specifically are, what kind of agreements they are. Okay. And I think go ahead, Philip. No, I was just gonna go to the next question. Keep going. Oh. I was just going to say real quick, figuring out where your where your company fits in the spectrum of what they call the purchasing thresholds is a big mm -hmm. deal. You know what we're seeing here today um, are reasonably large contracts, and that may or may not be where your business fits. There's different ways they purchase. All the federal agencies have a number of vehicles available to them to make their purchases, depending on the dollar amount. And so what we're seeing here today tend to be, you know, larger buys. Uh, but, you know, your business may or may not fit in this spectrum. So it's really figuring out where that is and, and uh, not to get too far in the weeds on that, but that's a, actually one of the first things we would do with mm -hmm. you is help you figure it because that path will be different depending on where well, you fit in the spectrum of the purchasing. Yep. Go ahead, Philip. Okay, next question. Is there any way to see the actual proposal of the contract winner? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you have to, well, yeah, you'd have to request that from the agency. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. I, I will say just um, when it comes to like federal versus state, the state of Montana is really transparent and that's something that is available through Montana. Um, I, it's a little bit harder sometimes at the federal level in my experience, but uh, you know, if you're interested in, in, in seeing that at the state, you know, state of Montana level, that's something that's, that's definitely available. Um, okay, Alan says, I do precision mach machining. Do I need ISO certifications like ISO 9001 and 9100? Um, in some cases, yes. Not in all cases. Um, a lot of Department of Defense does want those types of certifications, but, um, you know, a lot of the civilian agencies, no. I mean, it really depends. The, the solicitations will always I mean, they're, they're going to say what they're looking for. They're going to want, they'll say if you need those certifications, but it's, um, yeah, not all the time. Just depends. I think we hit everything. I answered the question about where the recordings are available. We, I don't know if Roz and Deanna, if you've talked about um, how to make the webinar recordings available. It's recording to the cloud right now. Um, so I'll have a link when it's done and okay. I will give that to everybody. And there was a question about, was the current opportunities webinar recorded? I'm not sure. Oh, that's no, no. That was the one where we forgot to hit the record button, right? Yes. Okay. But <laughs> I have, I have a YouTube video that was, I recorded several months ago that goes over the same thing. Um, I mean, one update on that YouTube video is the saved search feature and getting notices of opportunities that is possible now, um, but it is, I can give that, we can give that YouTube video to you if you need it. And, and one thing I'll point out is that, you know, some, some PTACs in like more metropolitan areas don't have a lot of time to do one-on-one -on -one training with people, but um, you know, if you need help with any of these things, um, just go ahead and call up your local PTAC office and make an appointment and, uh, and we're happy to help you. Yep. Absolutely. I don't see, oh, nope, just good feedback, I think. Okay. So while you guys let all this information digest, you know, yeah, think of some questions, um, you know, and reach out to your advisor so we can help help answer answer those questions and help you get on the right track. And I mean, that's what we're here for. We're, we're, we're your, your free source of support um, through the government contracting world. Um, you know, that's, so lean on us, lean on us to, to help you. That's, that's what we're here for. That's, we like, we like to do that. We like to help people. So. Philip, do you want to talk about your upcoming cybersecurity workshop? Uh, I, I uh, yeah, so it's it's not me. Um, there is a organization called Project Spectrum that is um, has been uh, formed, I guess, or contracted with the uh, Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs. And their whole purpose for existence is to get the, um, the defense industrial base, basically Department of Defense contractors, up to speed and up to snuff on um, being cyber compliant. So um, there were a number of cybersecurity requirements um, that were in integrated into the Defense uh, Federal Acquisition Regulation Supplement a few years ago. And... Uh, a lot of companies that, a lot of smaller companies that do business with the Department of Defense have kind of taken them as more suggestions than requirements. So um, the Department of Defense is moving towards this uh, CMMC model, which is, I'm completely forgetting what it stands for, but it's some kind of third party certification of your cybersecurity um, compliance. And so what this uh, webinar is about is um, even if you're really small and you don't have your own in-house IT department, um, how you can hit the minimum level on cybersecurity. Um, this new uh, certification program is not in place yet, but 
um, this is that the, they have a good sense of, of what it's going to look like. And so they're trying to get people that are even not very technologically savvy to get to a point where even if they do something like landscaping on an Air Force base or, you know, janitorial services, that they make sure that they're compliant um, with the Department of Defense regu uh, requirements. So um, I think it's May 27th. Let me make sure I'm not telling you wrong. Um, Laraz, do you have that? I was I was in the process of trying to add our YouTube uh, link to the chat box when Deanna asked me this question. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's on the uh, MontanaPTAC.org under events. That's it's it's posted there, and I think you can register already. Yeah, uh, but I think yeah. it is the twenty seventh, isn't it? Yeah, look, uh, I'll, I'll look here. Hang on. You got it. Okay. And yes. if you didn't put your name or company name in the chat box, please make sure to do that before you log off. Yeah, I was I was pretty aggressively uh, trying to get that taken care of, uh, Roz. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Philip. And uh, also, Christy in our Kalispell location is is uh, hosting a government contracting kind of 101. And so, even if you're an experienced contractor, there's probably tips uh, that you would learn from that workshop. That's on May 19th. And if you go to montanaptac.org on the event page, you can register there and it'll be a, a virtual training like this. And so keep your eye on the events page on montanaptac.org because we're planning more events like this. And um, like many organizations, kind of getting up to speed on how to best make it work virtually. And, and mm -hmm. so just keep your eyes out and give us a ring with any questions. Yeah. All Anything right. Else? Well, if there's no more questions, then I hope you guys all have a good day and thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Roz. Bye. Thank you. Bye.